Good morning from the Disney Magic for the last time. It is 8.05. We are leaving our room. Um, we have disembarked and we're, we're disembarking. They haven't called us yet. I'm gonna go up to Cabana's for breakfast and head out. I don't know if I'm gonna film at all. We'll see. Um, and then I will, if I don't, we'll just do a recap after this. So as you can see, we are home. It is 10:15. Um, we got in line to get off the ship at 8.58. Um, we were off the ship within two minutes and we were in our car by 928. So it took half an hour. It was really quick, really easy disembarkation or debarkation, whatever it's called. Um, I always recommend if you have, you know, any sort of luggage, it's easier just to get a porter, um, save yourself, like treat yourself on vacation, get a porter, um, tip them well, they get you to your car or have wherever you need to be. It's just we could could we have done the luggage ourselves yes but um it's just easier with the porter and they're always great um but yeah customs was really fast you know the best thing about um being on the magic or even the wonder is that it's a small ship so um that really makes embarkation and um, debarkation pretty easy so but it was great um we were all the numbers all the uh characters I guess they're called were called by by nine o'clock which is when we got off um we don't know when ours was called because we couldn't hear um they didn't really have it it wasn't available on the app or anything but they weren't kicking us out either um our we had early seating so seating for breakfast was at 7 a.m we skipped that we went to cabanas um they started shutting down everything at cabanas around 8 25 and by 8 30 it was closed so um if you got in like around 8.30, everything was already shut down. But um, other than that, uh, they didn't really kick us out. Um, we left around 8.45 is when we headed out of Cabanas. But great cruise, um, weather was crappy, but not Disney's fault. Crew was great. Um, the, you know, just amazing crew. Uh, our service at dinner, which I'll talk about later in our recap, was um, just slow. They were not, bad but they were slow and um yeah there was just there were issues there that was the really um first time we've had really i mean we had some issues on the wish the last time but that was also i think where the rotation and where we were um this time it, it was the servers it was the servers um so yeah um that was a little disappointing they were very nice and everything but um yeah it, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, I hate I hate being critical because I know they work really hard, but um, that was one that was one of the disappointing things. But other than that, it was a great cruise. So uh, here's my um, recap now. Okay, so obviously I am back, and actually it is um, a month after we have gotten back from our trip on the Disney Magic. It's taken me this long to film um, the recap but it's still very fresh in my mind. So uh, I'm just gonna cut touch on a couple things. I think a lot for the majority of the things I did touch on in the videos, but I'll kind of real, you know, elaborate. It was only a three night cruise, um, but it, it was our first time back on the, the Disney Magic since February, 2020. We got off uh, the Disney Magic on February 29th, 2020, two weeks later, everything shut down. Um, and for the most part, the ship is the same. Uh, they did redo the, what was the Promenade Lounge is now the Soul Cout Lounge, which is such an underrated space. It is fantastic. Carlos, the bartender there was fantastic. Fantastic. It's a gorgeous space. I've never even seen that movie Soul, but it just, I just loved it. It was, if you, you know, like to, you know, go to a bar or stuff, I think that is just the best place. Um, <laughs> don't get that, you know, scope drink that I got at the pub. It was awful. Um, and I wish I had known about the happy hour. I guess maybe they don't, I don't know why they didn't like um, talk about it. I remember that being now when we went back, it was like, oh, that's how it was on the dream. We forgot about it, but you know, live and learn. Um, but that, you know, as far as the ship though, there really wasn't that much of a difference. Um, you know, kids club looked pretty much the same and, um, you know, it was, it was, it was great. It was just as we remembered it. It was fantastic. Um, our state room. So we had one of the secret porthole state rooms. Great. Um, you know, so technically we paid for an inside inside cabin. We had that porthole. It was fantastic. A great location on the same deck as um, the 
uh, Oceaneer Club and very close to the elevators. It was just fantastic. Um, highly recommend that room. Uh, we didn't miss the balcony at all, like at all. It was great. So, uh, you know, if you can get, I think it's a great, I loved being on the same deck as Ocean Air Club. Just, it was just fantastic. So, um, now we went on the Disney Dream last year. Well, actually last year we went on the Disney Dream and the Disney Wish. And then this year, obviously we went on Disney Magic. Um, there's pros and cons of all. Obviously the Disney Magic is the oldest ship in the fleet, but I really like the smaller ships. We haven't been on Wonder, but I really like the smaller ships for this reason specifically, if you like characters and you want your child to meet a lot of the characters, the lines for the characters are significantly less on the magic. This is our second time on the magic. We've been on the dream twice and the wish twice. The lines on the magic are just significantly less because there's less people. So there's only one Mickey, there's only one Minnie, but you know, there's a lot more people on the dream and the wish. So when you're on the magic, the lines are just smaller. They moved, you know, the crew was fantastic. The entertainment crew, I mean, they kept those, those lines moving. Um, they were still doing autographs. They were still interacting, but they kept everybody moving. So the lines moved really, really fast. So that's one of the things. So if you are, you know, really want to focus on characters, then you may want to consider one of the smaller ships because the lines are just more manageable. Um, that was something that I remember from um, the magic the last time. Now, the only exception was the uh, Marvel Day at Sea um, because that was like only one day. Um, but other than that, like the lines for Mickey and Minnie, like it was definitely manageable. Okay, going to our dining rotation, um, just like last time we started with Rapunzel's Royal Table, I did request that. I did send a request to Disney Cruise Line to start our rotation with Disney, uh, Rapunzel's Royal Table. The reason being is that I knew that was the dinner show and that's when you're fresh. So I knew my son was fresh, we were fresh, and that's when we were gonna want to sit to dinner the entire time. Um, I didn't wanna do that the second or third night. Worked out great, it was fantastic. Um, the Our second night was um, Lumineers, which was great, and then the last night was um, Animator's Palette. So uh, our son, you know, wanted to get back. Now our servers, not good. Um, they were nice, they weren't bad, but they were extremely slow. And it was one of those where you wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt and you kind of noticed like, okay, the first night, it's the first night. They didn't, we sat there for 20 minutes and they didn't even give us a menu. Now, um, my brother-in-law and his family weren't there at their table. We didn't know they were sitting with us because they were at the later sitting. So we didn't know and we had to finally ask them, hey, we, we need menus in there. And they told us, oh, we thought you were waiting for people. But instead of asking, um, I, I thought it would have been you know smart to ask us rather than just like let us sit there and not bring us water, bring us a menu or anything. Um, we never got dessert, not one night. Um, now the first two nights, we really aren't big dessert eaters. We, but the third night we told them, like the first night, the last night is when we eat dessert. They were just so slow. Um, the second night, you know, we never, we never got dessert menus, but we were one of the last people to leave, not because we wanted to, we were one of the last people to leave. Um, and we were just finishing dinner. Like we never got dessert menus. We never were wanted dessert, but we were still one of the last people to leave at Lumiere's. We were a little late that night, so, um, but that was because there was a line at the, um, the Oceaneers Club, but we were maybe 10 minutes late. So that was, um, you know, again, really, really slow. And then the last night we were on time. Um, they brought me gluten-free bread, great but we had a t table of seven. By the time it got to me, there was no butter. I asked them twice for butter, never brought me butter. Um, it was just, and then we really wanted dessert. We both really wanted dessert. And we were finally like, my son wanted to see Captain Mickey because he wanted a picture with Captain Mickey. And it was like, okay, do we, do we get the picture with my son with Captain Mickey? or do we eat dessert? And we chose to, you know, get the picture with my son for Captain Mickey. We can have dessert other places. So it was just, um, it was just slow and, on, and then slow and they just didn't mesh well. Again, they were very nice, but they didn't mesh well. Um, I, I had a bottle of, you know, a package of three bottles of wine. 
I needed a second, my third bottle of wine. And I kept trying to wait, you know, get him to get my third bottle of wine that night. And finally it was like, okay, like we were at the end of dinner and he's like, I was like, yeah, I wanted a third bottle of wine. And I was like, but I, I'm finished with dinner. So I ended up just taking the bottle of wine home. Um, yeah, so uh, I didn't leave in a comic card cause I didn't want somebody to get dinged for it. Right or wrong, I don't know. But um, it was just, it was not good. Okay, next let's talk about Castaway Key. Um, if you watched my video, the, the weather at Castaway Key was awful and we just never got off. Um, that was not our plan. We had planned to get off, but um, the weather was so bad. And then by the time it did clear up, it cleared up around one. We just were like, yeah, we're staying on the ship. Um, my brother-in-law and his family did get off. Now we've been there before, so we didn't feel like we had to. We wanted to, you know, we'd, we were just like, okay, it's fine. Um, now, because we made it to the island, all the crew from the Oceaneer Club were on, on Scuttles Cove. So they didn't, you know, they didn't really add, they said they added some stuff, but honestly, they only added a few things and they really didn't add enough stuff on the ship to keep people busy. Um, you know, everybody was in the kids club. I heard Scuttles Cove was like pretty much empty. I heard at one point there was like two kids, um, but they had to have it fully staffed because we had made it to the island. So. I, I don't question why it was like that. I, I understand completely why it was like that. But I know um, I had friends that they were on a cruise last year and they they ended up not being able and they had to come skip Castaway Key completely. I almost think that's better. Um, now I understand the disappointment, but I almost wish we hadn't made it because um, there was just, there was really nothing to do on the ship. Um, at least for the first part of the day. So like the slides were closed. Um, the Oceaneer Club was open, but it was an open house. So you couldn't like leave your kid there. So I would have liked to have gone to the spa and I would have totally booked a spa appointment. But um, yeah, so it, you know, it is what it is. But sometimes my, maybe like if you miss a port, it might be better in the long run because they can add stuff. But it, it wasn't a big deal for us that we missed it. We still made great use of the day. Um, my son and my husband still went in the pool. They had a great time. It did clear up. So it was really great. I think the staff and the crew handled it great. Um, you know, having the characters on the ship and meeting on the ship was fantastic. We got to see three characters in a very short period of time, which we probably wouldn't have been able to do on the island. So I thought it was, I thought it was handled really well. Um, I did find out an answer. Thank you to Christy from DCL Podcast and Pack Your Pixie Dust. Um, she did comment Comment and she did tell me that if you book an excursion, whether that's a cabana or anything, and you make it to the island and, in, and it still goes on, you're on the hook. Like you're on the hook. And that includes the cabana, even if the weather's bad. So if the weather's crappy and um, it's, you know, you decided not to get out of the ship, you're still paying several hundred dollars for the cabana. Um, and I did talk to another family that they went to the Stingray. They had a Stingray excursion. It wasn't canceled. It still happened. And I said, well, how was it? They said, well, we only got off the island because we had that excursion. Um, we tried to cancel, but they said we, we were gonna, you know, we couldn't get our money back. So we went and they said it was nice, but the water was wavy. Um, they had a four-year-old and he kept getting knocked off and they said the water was freezing. Now it's, it was September. So, but because of the weather, the water was really, really cold. Their son actually had a horrible time. They said it was handled well as much as it could have been, but it being cold, it being really wavy, um, they kind of had wished it had gotten canceled. So things to consider when you're booking an excursion, um, if it doesn't get canceled, you're on the hook. Now, Nassau, we never plan to get off at Nassau. We never do. So we kind of use that as a sea day, especially on a three night cruise. But a lot of people stayed on the ship. Um, there was also a lot more amenities because it wasn't their island. So the crew, you know, um, most of the crew, like they weren't working on the on Nassau. They were on the ship. So, um, you know, there was open house, but they still had the kids club opened a little sooner. They had the slide, um, the aqua dunk, you know, did open. Um, there was a lot more people at the Encanto celebration the day of Nassau, even though it was at 11 a.m. Um, there was a lot more people at that one than the one at 3 p.m. on Saturday when we were Castaway Key. Uh, speaking of that, um, yeah, uh, Mirabelle and Bruno are supposed to show up, but they may not. So they didn't show up at the one on Saturday. The 
crew didn't know why they didn't show up. You could tell they were surprised, but um, they did show up on Sunday, so we did get a picture. And unfortunately for me, that's when I brought my son. Um, I just went on Saturday to kind of film, and yeah, it was kind of a surprise that they didn't make it. But if you're really looking forward to seeing um, and you want a picture with Mirabelle and Bruno, then they do. They did one meet and greet with photographers on the Sunday. Um, it was in the afternoon, but they did one meet and greet. Um, they're not necessarily, they're not necessarily guaranteed at the Encanto celebration. Now, speaking of that, um, I do want to say the entertainment crew, the Oceaneer Club crew, the kids, everything, they were all fantastic. Um, they were just amazing. Um, the kids club, my son had a blast. He just wanted to spend the entire cruise there. He closed it every night. He just had an amazing time. Very different from when he was on there when he was four. When he was four, um, there was twice that he asked to come, come back and get picked up. And I think it was just the age. Um, you know, he, he, he used to go to daycare, so it wasn't that. I think it was just not knowing any kids and there were kids that he wanted to play with. But now that he was older, he's almost eight years old. It was definitely a much better experience and he absolutely loved it um and you know the crew entertainment crew fantastic speaking of the entertainment crew so this was a three night cruise and we had done it last year on the dream and um pirate night was one night and halloween was the last night so the second night was pirate night the third night and the final night was the halloween night this time it was both on the second night I was not happy about that before the cruise. I will be honest. I was very disappointed. I was like, you know, you pay for this Halloween cruise, you pay extra for it, and they're combining it with it. With, it. Um, with that said, I would have preferred that they were separate, but I thought it was handled really, really well, and we made fun with it. Um, we went in our Halloween costumes. We've done Pirate Night before. It wasn't a big deal, um, but Ryder wanted to be Oswald again. I went as Hortensia the Cat. Ray wore a t-shirt and um, you know, that's what we did. We went with our Halloween costumes and so they had the Halloween um, and, and then the Halloween event, um, the mouse parade was at 745. We had the first seating. Our, our trick or treating was at 815 immediately after the mouse parade. And then the um, pirate night or pirates in the Caribbean was at 1015. And what we did is we just um, did a mashup. I actually just kind of, you know, put a little bandana with left my ears on, uh, took off the pink skirt, and then Ryder became Pirate Oswald, which we had fun with. Um, so it was great. Uh, and then it was kind of nice, I will say, it was kind of nice to not have too much that last night, which actually allowed us to pack and have our bags out on time, which we've never done in the, in the past. So there was some perks to that. So while I probably would have preferred that they be separate, it worked out really well and it was done really well and I don't feel like we lost anything from either. I don't feel like we were we lost something from the Halloween and I don't think we lost anything from Pirate Night. It was just all on one night. Now we didn't see too many of the shows. We saw most of Tangled. We saw the Disney Dream or Disney Dreams at the end. Um, but we had seen it before and my nephew was falling asleep so we just kind of left with them. Um, Tangled was fantastic. Oh, the, the, the stuff was, the, the entertainment is fantastic on the ship. Um, we just, we're not big entertainment people and then a lot of the shows we had seen before so it wasn't a priority of ours. Um, you know, this I think we like, we really like the pool deck shows and the parties and stuff like that. Um, they really do a great job with having kid zones. And now that my son is a little older, you know, he can go off to the kid zone. I mean, there was a couple times where we had no idea where he was and we would spot him on the on the big screen. We're like, oh, there he is, like he's fine. Um, but he really had a great time. Um, the sail away party was fantastic. We, we never got to see the one on the wish. Um, so the fact that uh, we finally got, you know, we got to see the one here, it was, it was great. Same as the one that we did in 2020, it's the same show, but it was still a lot of fun. Um, and it was just a, a really, really great trip. Um, I, I think that I loved the wish. I think the Disney wish is amazing. I'm very excited to get on the Disney treasure whenever I get on it. Um, it's a week long cruise, so I don't know when we will be able to sail on it. But, um, you know, I don't underestimate, you know, the smaller ships, um, the magic and the wonder. I think they're fantastic. Um, we did book a placeholder, so we do have a placeholder for the future. Um, don't know when we're gonna go, don't, uh, you know, so we have two years to book something else. 
but um you know it was just a really great trip our uh, by the way our, our say our embarkation was uneventful we did go around one o'clock this time um which was definitely better i would say don't go like like 2 30 or 3 which is what we did last year um because we just were like oh we'll go right after school it was awful i <laughs> mean not awful but it was really really crowded because a lot of people did that a lot of people were going right after school um this time that we we literally just walked on the ship i mean there was no line whatsoever um and then once we got on the ship our rooms were ready which was great um, and uh, disembarkation was also fantastic. Like it was super fast, um, you know, picking up our stuff. I mean, we got through the terminal super duper fast, um, not a long wait to get off the ship and not a long wait for customs, found our bags, got a porter, got our stuff and we were, we were on the road. So, you know, really uneventful. And that's also one of the perks of being on a smaller ship is that the embarkation and disembarkation are a lot easier. So all in all, I, I think it was a great trip. Um, was it probably our favorite sailing? No, um, I actually didn't feel too well. And then um, I the weather was crappy. But you know, the weather being crappy wasn't a huge deal. Oh, I do want to talk about the raffle. I forgot to mention this. Um, I had won, if you saw the first day, I won $50. I think it was $50 or $100. I don't remember. But I won something at the raffle at the, at the spa raffle but it was for a med spa treatment um but they wouldn't let me they wouldn't tell me what everything cost i had to schedule a consultation that was going to be an hour long before i could even book something for to use the raffle so i was like okay you want me to spend an hour of my time on a three night cruise which is really only two and a half days and spend an hour of time just for you to tell me what the prices are. So I ended up not doing it. Um, that was just kind of, kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And, you know, I didn't really, you know, just kind of give me an idea. Like if, tell me what things cost, because then I could tell you, yes, you know, I knew I wasn't getting Botox. I'm not going to get Botox or a filler on a ship. Um, you know, it just, it just, I'm not going to. Um, so there was limited of what I could do, but then they also wouldn't give me prices. So, yeah, that was the, that's why I never used the raffle because again, the consultation was going to be, they told me it was going to be an hour long consultation just for them to tell me what my choices were and how things were going to cost. So I was like, okay, it's just, my time is precious, especially on a cruise, especially on a three night cruise. So I wasn't going to waste my time, but that's why I never used my raffle winning from the spa. It was still fun to win, but you know, um, kind of weird of how they how they handled it so with that it was a fantastic cruise um would book it again and i would book it again even if i knew that pirate night and um you know halloween night were on the same night really love the halloween cruises they're so much fun really like the christmas one we've done the christmas one twice as well um i think i might like the halloween more i'm, I'm not sure um my son really loves the halloween one and uh but it is fun to see the christmas decorations but it was great and i um, anxious to get back we don't have a disney cruise um scheduled yet but we did book a placeholder so hopefully we will be going on one soon i'm very anxious to get to the new um caribbean or the new island uh at is it paradise point i think um going to be starting in june or july of 2024 so hopefully i will get on a cruise to see that but with that if you like this video click like click and subscribe that way you get a notification every time i post a new video bye everyone